All right, so something I wanted to talk about today uh, is actually a term uh, I just heard uh, for the first time earlier this week, and it's called rent vesting. Uh, somebody shared it with me as, on a comment on uh, on one of my posts, and I was like, oh, that's an interesting term, never heard of it. Uh, so I did a little research. It's actually been out there uh, quite a bit. Uh, many of the articles I read about actually talk, were re referenced to Australia market, but uh, I thought I would sort of talk about what it is and, and um, at least pose the idea and, and think about is, is it something that uh, is something that's right for you. So first sort of talk about what it is, um, sort of just give you the basics, uh, to then share with you my thoughts, uh, and then uh, just give you some highlights on things um, on properties you might uh, might consider, just, just as examples to see if it made sense uh, for you. So first and foremost, I want to give a special shout out to Thomas Winfield. Uh, he was the individual that brought rent investing to my attention. Uh, I try to uh, stay back who I am, and that's uh, always giving credit where credit's due. So Thomas Winfield, um, his Facebook page says he's a real estate broker associate at Keller Williams Realty. Uh, I want to thank him for bringing this to uh, to my attention. Really, it boils down to, um, you know, if you live in a high price market, uh, you don't currently own. It's the idea of choosing to rent. Uh, rent where you want to live, and then you invest or buy uh, where the numbers make sense. You know, the real sort of black and white of it is is you're not an owner-occupant and you don't live or you don't own, you don't pay a mortgage on the house that you live in. Uh, you instead choose to rent. And then your first purchases, your second purchases are always investment properties. That's sort of um, the basics of it. Uh, really what it means is you're not buying ridiculously priced homes uh, if you happen to live in one of these bubble markets and, and these bubble markets are growing um, and, the, and the list is frankly getting longer uh, of the markets that are um, you know uh, really overpriced if you will uh, and more importantly you're not saddled with uh, these you know huge mortgage payments uh, going forward All right just uh, you have a you're far more flexible with a rent payment than these some of these mortgage payments I see out there. And then again, you're buying investment properties for your future, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you're letting uh, you're letting the numbers tell you where to invest, right? You're you're getting some appreciation. You're getting cash flow if you're following my model, right? You don't buy um, what I've always called alligator properties. When alligator, again, just for reference, is a property that consumes money every month, um, as opposed to you know producing positive cash flow. Uh, and it's just my strong belief that you should never purposely put together a deal where the uh, property ends up eating money uh, every month and I, again I call that an alligator property. So this is what I think of it. Uh, I think for individuals and families in these really hot markets like the Bay Area, like SoCal, like Seattle, like you know the list goes on and on these days. Um, I frankly think it's the only option. You know maybe there'll be a downturn and prices will come down 10 or 15 percent. Um, but in fairness, the if interest rates go up, but prices come down, these mortgage payments are going to stay, you know, near the same or, or could. So it's just it's tough. Um, but you know, it's okay to rent. It doesn't. Uh, it's not stamped on your forehead that you're a renter or anything like that. So um, I, I just think it's a wise financial decision. Uh, the other thing is, is, you know, why would you pay for a shack or a small condo or a you know a studio or whatever? when you can actually rent a nice home in a nicer area, probably for less than your mortgage payment, certainly less than your total expenses when you add in um, insurance and taxes and uh, maintenance and all that stuff. It's just a, it just doesn't make sense. You know, again, do you, then do you want really want to look at that, uh, you know, mortgage payment every month? Um, you know, pretty, lots of folks I know that did jump in here recently are already having, uh, you know, buyer's remorse. And unfortunately, you, know, you signed on the dotted line and, um, you know, that's, that's a long time to have these, uh, these payments. And again, you know, run the numbers, right? You know, who am I, right? What do I know? Um, run the numbers for your situation, see what makes sense. Um, you know, I think if you buy a home in this, uh, this crazy market that might, that seems to be topping out, uh, I got a question, right? Will you ever have the resources to invest in your future, right? Is, is if you do pull the trigger on an owner occupant house in, in this market, what does that mean for you and your investment career, right? Are you sort of tied into that house and you can't invest in anything else? And that's, you know, that house is your retirement, right? Which means you sell it when you uh, retire. 
uh, or you know, do you rent and then you know buy several investment properties and, and you know get economies of scale and, and all of those things so again just just some ideas some people I've heard you know call this a, a sacrifice or a choice um, I frankly call it a wise investment decision uh, as I shared in the book uh, and I think I've shared it on videos a couple of times one of the reasons we got to where we were was because um, you know, we, we got into a, a condo in, in 99 and, and we never left, right? Even though our incomes quadrupled or went up maybe even tenfold. Uh, we could have clearly moved into a different area, single family home, got a yard for the dog, all that stuff. Uh, but it would have, would have meant increased cost of living. Our, our, our monthly expenses would have gone up, probably doubled if not tripled. And I truly believe we wouldn't be retired today if, um, if we had done that. So, um, I, you know, I think, I think it's a wise decision and, and it's, you know, some people may call it a sacrifice, but, uh, again, you're, um, you owe yourself, um, <clears throat> all the things in the future. So, uh, I think it's a it's smart decision again. So I just thought I would close with some things you could consider instead of buying one of these crazy, uh, uh, you know, individual homes, uh, just because I have some stuff coming out in the pipeline. I just thought I'd, you know, give you guys a, a heads up what's coming. So we were, uh, we purchased a six unit apartment building, all three bedroom, two baths, thousand square feet, garages uh, that will be coming on the market uh, here probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're we're going to be asking 480 grand. Um, we've taken rents that were too low uh, up to 800. And, and if anybody happens to leave, which it doesn't look like they will, uh, we will turn the units and, and uh, bring the rents up to almost a thousand dollars. So lots of upside in that building. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're very excited about that one. Uh, we have another deal that uh, people are already looking at, uh, four small little one-bedroom uh, houses on a single lot. Um, you know, it's a large, probably half-acre lot, and um, there's actually four little homes on it where, with their own little yards and, and all of that. Uh, again, uh, this is one that uh, was rented way below market uh, that we've already repaired the outsides, new roofs, windows, doors, paint, all of that. But now we need to get inside and, and turn those units. Again, rents are going to go from 350 up to at least 750, if not more. And uh, we're looking to price that one out at about 300 grand. There's a triplex uh, right near downtown in the area that is clearly turning around. And you just drive down and see all the renovations going on. It's sort of like downtown Castro Street near us. It's got all those old craftsmen and Tudor homes. It's uh, you know, it's walking distance to the, the to downtown and the nightlife and, and all of that. It's pretty cool. Um, lots of work to do there. Uh, some evictions of existing tenants and the like, but uh, it's going to be a very nice unit. We're thinking that one's going to be right around 250 k Then, of course, there's the deal of the year, right? We just uh, got a contract about uh, six, two families. I think five of them are like two houses on one lot and then one's an actual duplex um, where they're sort of, um, you know, actually connected. Uh, but those are going to be great. Uh, those are going to be probably priced. Uh, I think the smallest one will go for somewhere around 140 and then the largest one probably around 190. So, you know, the others will be sort of between those two numbers, but again, lots of things, uh, lots of, um, lots of options for people looking at, uh, at rent vesting. And then of course we have some single family homes that we have, uh, have purchased and are turning around. Um, we're going to fully remodel them, likely, uh, stick renters in, uh, getting somewhere between 11 and 1300 in rent and selling these homes probably for 160 to 190 uh, depending on which one we're talking about so again lots of lots of options right the six unit apartment building being the most expensive right it's 480 grand rent's going to be roughly five grand a month um, nice area great units um, you know just just you know think about that what what could you get for 480 grand? Uh, in, the, in any of these bubble markets uh, and said you could get an apartment building uh, that will be protected with, uh, you know, rental income. Uh, it will be, it'll, inflation will be your friend, right? all these things. Then then you step down to a four single family homes. You still get traditional financing, right? You would get commercial financing for the six unit because it's above five units. Uh, but there's four houses. You can get just regular Bank of America, Wells Fargo, you know, whatever, Financing, same with the triplex and, and duplexes and, and single family homes. So, lots of options to think about. Um, you know, if you happen to be interested in these, let us know. Um, again, we'll take uh, we'll take pictures and, and uh, 
heading down Sunday to look at the two families. So I'll probably take some pictures of each of those just to start marketing those. All right. If you happen to like this video, uh, have questions about rent vesting, interested in any of those uh, properties coming on the market, let us know. Uh, thank you again for my subscribers. We're up to 103. Uh, do me a favor and share this out uh, as we are uh, slowly walking our way up the hill to 1,000 subscribers. Have a great day.